Hello friends, you are welcome to our next lecture. In our previous lecture, we have orchestrated the melody between solos, woodwinds and string section. Today we will learn how to orchestrate same melody between woodwinds, brass and string section. Okay, let's listen to original piano version of the melody. Let's now explore how to orchestrate. As you see, there are three lines progression in these eight bars fraction. It is obvious that we can't change the melody. Hence, we present it with active doublings while the orchestration. So, the middle line is a harmony and the bottom line is a bass line. In this lecture, we will discuss all of this. Today I want to add more sad and mournful sound to our orchestration. Okay, which instruments are possible for this character? Oboe, English horn and bassoon from woodwind section, trumpet from brass section, cellos from string section are useful. So I want to give the melody to English horn and cellos. Okay, I chose instruments for the melody line. Now is the time for other lines. So let's start from the bass line. In our previous lecture, we have talked that each section has its own bass instruments, which support the others. Bassoon and contrabassoon in woodwinds, bass trombone and the tuba in brass, bass drum and the timpani in percussion section, cello and contrabass in string section. But I would like to draw your attention to the point that the bassoon and contrabassoon are also can take the bass line if the harmony is on the French horns. It sounds very well because the French horn is the unique instrument from the brass family which blends inside the woodwinds as a woodwind instrument and inside the brass section as a brass instrument. Therefore, we can give the bass line to bassoons and contrabassoon, the harmony line to French horns while the orchestration. So, let's do it. I'm giving the bass line to bassoon. I'm adding the staccato and A2, which means will perform by two bassoon players. Dynamic marking is piano. For reinforcing the bass line, I use an active lower doubling with contrabassoon. As we said in our previous lecture, it sounds active lower than rhythm. Contrabassoon is also playing staccato in piano. Our bass line is ready. Now is the time of the partitioning of the harmony line between French horns. At first, I want to talk about this instrument. The French horn in F has a range from B1 to F5. This is a transposing instrument and sounds perfect fifth lower than rhythm. The French horn is written in bass clef and in treble clef. There are two types of notation for this instrument. 
new notation and older notation. Notation in treble clef are the same in both notation, which written perfect fifths higher than sounding. But in bass clef they are different. In new notation you have to write perfect fifths higher, but in older notation perfect fourths lower than sounding. It is very important to know both notation types because some older scores were written in older notation. You come across it frequently. The second important information is about the staff notation. Two types of staff notation are used infrequently. First type, first and second horns in the high staff third and the fourth in the low staff in the first notation type. First and the third horns in the high staff, second and fourth horns in the low staff. But in both notation, first and third horns take high notes, second and fourth horns take low notes of the chord. This is a common rule in orchestration. So the important information is that, unlike other transposing instruments such as the clarinet, the horn has always been written without key signature at the beginning of the staff. Accidentals were written into the score. Now let's move to orchestration. There are three notes in the code. We can share it between three horns. Horns play staccato. The dynamic marking is piano. The orchestration of the bass and the harmony line are completed. Now is the time to add more ornaments to orchestration. After adding ornaments, we will get a rich score and very sonorous sounding. As we have talked about three steps in our previous lessons, in order to get more figures, we have to use splitting, transforming and partitioning steps. Let's look what we have to do and what we couldn't do in wild orchestration. Splitting step. Firstly, look at the code as an unpitched figure. It will help you to change your focus. This is one eighth race with two eighth notes. Find figures which are equal to this figure. Just think. Okay, now you have more figures. Then move to transforming step. In this step, you have to add notes from harmony on the unpitched figure. In my case, they are A, D, F notes, which transforming are allowed in wild orchestration. First, you can transform the harmony. Second, you can use doubling in more active. Third, you can double any note from the harmony line. Fourth, you can use the notes from the melody line if other note of the harmony line is inside the melody line. It is rare but found in piano scores. Look at the below. The harmony are consist of D, G, B flat notes. 
However, F note looks like as the melody, but it belongs to harmony line. You can present the harmony as D, G, B flat, F chord in wild orchestration. Partitioning step. In this step, you have to share the figure between instruments. Which instrument is the best for your score? But you should know the range and the sound character of each instrument. Just imagine. And don't afraid to make mistakes. I share my knowledge and hope it will help you to change your imagination in wild orchestration. Okay, let's move to orchestrate. My first figure is 6 16 notes. The most important matter when you do it on your own score is to choose the figure that you like the most, hence you can enjoy what you are doing. In my case it is 6 16 figure. Let's move to the transforming step. I'm adding only A note onto my figure in transforming step. I will give this figure to violas because as clarinets the violas also blend very well between horns. I'm adding staccato. The dynamic marking is piano. Now let's add one more ornament. I take 6 16 figure, but for this one, add only D and F notes from the harmony line. I give this figure to second violins in the partitioning step. Before starting to orchestrate, I want to talk about the violin. Range of the violin is from G3 to A7, harmonic D. 8 is a non-transposing instrument notated in treble clef. There are four strings G, D, A, E. As I said, I'm giving this figure to second violence because there is other figure in my mind for the first violence. I'm adding staccato and dynamic marking is piano. Look at the score. Bassoons and contrabassoon take the bass line for supporting horns. Now I need one more bass for string section. For this purpose, I give this to contrabass and they will reinforce the violins and violas. Before, I want to give information about this instrument. Contrabass is the only transposing instrument in string section. This instrument sounds an active lower than rhythm. Contrabass with four strings has a range from E1 to G4. There are E, A, D, G strings. But modern contrabass has also extra lower B string. Sometimes players tune it to C1.
Now let's give the pizzicato marking to baseline. The dynamic marking is piano. For the next ornament, I take the figure, which are consist of one ace raise, one ace nose, and one ace raise. In the transforming step, I am adding harmony and doubling some notes from the chord. I create this for the harp player. You can get more information about this instrument in our previous lesson. Before writing harp score, I want to show you how to add the pedal diagram in Sibelius Notation software. The melody is in D minor. Our pedal diagram is completed. So I'm writing D and the A notes in the bass clef. Hard player will take this by the left hand. D and the F notes are in the treble clef and it will playing by the right hand. I am adding arpeggio from the keypad. Dynamic marking also is piano. Let's move to adding the next ornament. For this, I take the figure, which are consist of one sixteenth raise, one sixteenth note, and two eighth notes. In the transform step, I'm adding harmony and transform it. Then rise an octave higher because it will play by two flute players.
High notes are given to first flute, lower notes to second flute. I'm adding the staccato. The dynamic marking is mezzo piano because I need a bit louder sounding than other instruments. Now I want to create the next ornament. It will the answer of the flute figure. So let's do it. For this I take the figure which are consist of one sixteenth note, two so the second notes and four sixteenth notes. In the transformer step I'm adding only A note and then lift up an octave higher. I'm giving this figure to oboe because oboe is the best instrument giving the short and piercing sound. I'm adding staccato. First oboe player will play this figure. The dynamic marking is mezzo piano because this is the answer of the flute figure. Let's add one more ornament. To get the new ornament, I'm taking one dotted quarter note figure. In transforming step, I'm adding the harmony, but it will sound in the higher register. I want to give this figure to first violence. I'm adding the tremolo, it is the playing technique. As you see, there is the word divisi. It means that first violins will divide in two groups, which eight players will play higher notes, other eight players lower notes. The dynamic marking is pianissimo. Because violins take the harmony in higher register with tremolo. If right piano or mezzo piano, they will sound louder than melody. We don't need it. So, bass and the harmony line are completed. Now, let's talk about the melody line. 
as I said, we need sad and mournful sounding. Therefore, I'm giving the melody to English horn, but in this case, I change the register of the melody. It will an octave lower than original piano score. As we know, English horn sounds perfect fifths lower than rhythm, therefore we have to write perfect fifths higher. The dynamic marking is meso forte. I'm giving the melody to cellos, but in an octave below. I have to change slur above the nose. As we know from our previous lessons, slur is the bow technique. For clear writing, you'd better to ask the players in your own score. The dynamic marking is mesoforte. It is also possible to give the melody to first clarinet then the melody will be in three octaves. So our third orchestral texture is completed. Thank you for watching. See you soon.